Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated Western Visayas Region Librarians Council in partnership with Regalo Touching Lives for our 2020 Ply WVRLC Regional Council Online Conference. Today, with our theme, Libraries and Pandemic, Personal and Institutional Preparedness of Librarians and Libraries in Western Visayas, we are gathered together online to learn and continuously develop in our profession. To start with, may I request everyone to please pause for a while for an opening prayer to be led by Professor Federico Villones and please remain still as we have our national holiday. Good morning. As we are going to begin our webinar this morning, May I invite you to prayer, please? To you, our God, in whom we live and move and have our being, as your word says, we are thankful today that for as long as you give us life and breath, you give us opportunity, wisdom, and strength to be both normative and creative, not only for our own sakes, but ultimately for all of us in your love. We now have this challenge to undertake toward our professional and community concerns in these times of emergency. And so we ask for guidance to go about them, mindful of you and of your good intentions for our human faculty's sake and for our appropriate labors for innovative services. We ask you then, dear Father in heaven, to pave the way ahead of us with your grace and blessing, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. First, allow me to say thank you for joining us today with the rest of the librarians from Western Visayas. This pandemic will not hinder us to continuously learn and develop and enhance our profession. For me, this is a great moment for learning as all the red tape that keeps things away is gone and we are looking for solutions that in the past we did not see. We do not want to see. Students will take ownership over their own learning, understanding more about, about how they learn and what they like and what they need from us is our support system. We too can personalize their learning, even if the systems around them won't work. For us in Ply Western Visayas, real change takes place in deep crisis. Thus, we will not stop the momentum that we built. Together, let's embrace this new normal and instill in our hearts that these changes were not meant to put us down, but strengthen us to where we are standing and be rooted again. In behalf of Blind Western Visayas Regional Council officers and Regalo, thank you very much for joining us and good morning. And to give us the rationale of this regional conference, we call on Edmar Labrador, our 
Conference Chair and Fly Western Visayas Regional Council Vice President. Welcome and good morning to Fly Western Visayas Regional Librarians Council webinar with the theme, Libraries and Pandemic, Personal and Institutional Preparedness of Libraries and Librarians in Western Visayas. The following is the rationale. The Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated, WVRLC, is committed to its mission of fostering professional growth and performance of its members, believes that libraries as well as librarians and information professionals should continuously serve in times of pandemic. The following are the objectives of the webinar. First, explain the changing roles of libraries and librarians in the advent of a global pandemic. Two, identify partners, collaborators, and communities to strengthen services and resources of libraries. Three, understand societal changes that impact the psychological and behavioral patterns of librarians and library users. Fourth, present best practices on innovations and transformations among libraries and librarians in times of pandemic. The following are the webinar tips. First, sit in a quiet location where you will not be disturbed. Two, the participants will be muted for voice hearing during the presentations, but will be able to provide questions via chat mechanisms on the online software. Three, be an active participant. Provide your inputs to polling questions, respond to requests for comments or questions, let your presenter know what you are most interested in. Four, ask questions concisely. Webinars are focused. Be sure your questions are. Five, be respectful. If your webinar allows publicly visible chat, keep your contributions helpful and considerate of the host and other participants. Last, provide feedback. It can be very hard for hosts to tell how the experience was from the audience viewpoint. Help them improve the webinars to better match your needs and preferences by letting them know what worked well and what didn't work for you. Thank you and have a blessed day. Thank you very much, Sir Edmar, for uh, giving us the reminders of how we're going to uh, handle this regional online regional conference. To start with, may I introduce to you our speakers or presenters for topic one. We're going to talk about maximizing social media platforms for library services. This is the best practices uh, done by one of the university libraries here in Western Designs. Our presenters is currently uh, um, librarian at the Henry Luis III Library of Central Philippine University in Haro, Iloilo City. She's assigned as a cataloger and a member of the Virtual Library Services team. She's also a part-time faculty of the Bachelor of Library and Information Science program under the College of Computer Studies. She finished her bachelor's degree in LIS from CPU in 2014 and her master's degree in the same university in 2019. She has previously worked for a college library in a research library. She's the writer behind the blog Malditang Librarian or malditanglibrarian.com, which covers topics related to libraries, librarians, books, reading, and related news. She has been writing for Malditang Librarian since 2016. She ranked number one in the Librarian Licensure Examination in 2015. Our, our first presenter is Aliana S. Delgado. Together with her is a currently um, the Archives Librarian of Central Philippine University. He is currently pursuing his Master in Library Information Science in Central Philippine University, where he also graduated, graduated cum laude with a degree in Library Information Science. He previously worked as a Collections Manager Officer of Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Art, or Ilomoka, at Mega World under the Marketing Commercial Division here in Iloilo City. Together with his colleagues, they have published several papers in international peer-reviewed journals. And last September 2019, they presented one of their papers in the Joint Aquatic Sciences and Fisheries Abstract 
University Malaysia Terengganu, Conference in Kuala Terengganu, Malaysia. He is currently affiliated with CPU as a part-time instructor in his archives and special collections library. Let's welcome our first presenters for this day. For this morning, we have Aliana S. Delgado and Vince Urban Palapuni. Good morning, everyone. Our presentation for today is about the virtual reference services of the Henry Luce III Library of Central Philippine University. I am Aliana Delgado, and I am presenting with Vince Palcuni. So in this presentation, we will be covering these topics. We will be presenting the library's virtual reference services, how we plan for these services, and how we use social media to market and promote these services. So these are the components of our virtual reference services, which we will discuss in more detail later. So for our VRS, we also use the following. Our library website, which you can visit at library.cpu.edu.ph. We are in the process of our updating our website to include links to online resources, faculty and student publications, and recently we included news about the library and our activities. For the library Facebook page, we use it for marketing and promotion and communicating to our users. And our online public access catalog is also available for outsiders to search our library collections. We also put links on our website of, of our free and paid databases and open access resources as well. So why did we decide to have virtual reference services? Because of COVID-19 and the pandemic, the school has shifted to online learning. So the challenge for us librarians is, is what can we do in the new normal when no clients can enter the library? So we came up with these services. So here is an example of some of our tools that we use. For example, the content calendar where we put our planned posts, online events, and activities. And as part of our plan, we also have a policy where we write our guidelines and processes regarding reference services. So the policy is being updated as new situations occur. So here are the webinars we have conducted so far, which are for our faculty and students. Our first webinar was on creating reference services with Pascalia Terzi, the instruction librarian of Georgetown University in Doha, Qatar. So after this webinar, we also had our own in-house training on based on the information on how we can make our own virtual reference services. So this webinar was open to all and some librarians have attended. So our second webinar was on accessing online resources for course materials for our faculty. Our third webinar, which was quite, was quite popular, is about Copy Talk, a webinar for copyright for academics last July 3. So this webinar was held in partnership with the San Sebastian College Recoletos, Graduate School of Law, and some of our speakers included the Director of the Intellectual Property Office, the Dean of the San Sebastian College, Graduate School of Law, and a speaker from India, Dr. Sri Ram. So our latest webinar was on research writing for faculty and graduate students, which was about demystifying systematic review. So one of our new services is document delivery and scanning service. Because usually faculty and students would go to the library to borrow books, but now some of them won't be able to go to the library. So instead of them going in the library, we try to deliver or send to them the materials they need. So for a scanning service, we're using the scanner, which is originally used for the archives. It's a Fujitsu scan snap scanner where you only have to open the book and the scanner will take an image of the pages. So before we established these services, we also cons consulted with our administration if they will allow us to do these things. So we have decided that the scanning service is free for faculty and enrolled users. And for outside re researchers, there is a fee. So we also try to respect copyright laws and fair use. In our emails where we send the documents, we try to put a disclaimer saying that they cannot redistribute these materials. 
And as much as possible, we try to only scan around 20% of the book. So social media. We will be talking about how we use social media in our promoting this virtual reference services. So if you are planning to use social media for your library, please be reminded that in social media, not one size fits all. Just because we use these concepts in our library doesn't mean that you also have to use it. So for your library, you don't need to necessarily follow our model. Keep in mind your users and their preferences. For example, other schools, Instagram or Twitter might be more popular with their students and community. So there are some libraries who are more active on Instagram. Than Facebook. So our approach will be different from your library's focus. So there are also other ways to reach your users, not just Facebook. You can have a website, you can use text, email, phone, or any other means that the, your users prefer. So in social media, and in planning for social media, we need to focus and remember our users. So if you are planning to use social media, please be reminded that using social media also takes time to learn. It takes time to build engagement, to reach your audience, and it also takes patience. So just because we all have Facebook accounts doesn't mean that we can easily grasp how to use social media to market our resources or library services. So keep in mind that social media is always changing. Sometimes you notice that when you log in in your account, the format of Facebook has already changed. So if you're applying to use social media, always be updated on the latest trends or changes in social media. So before we use social media, we really consulted with our administration if they will allow us to use this because the school also has its own communications office and Facebook pages. So for the sake of protocol and also, we, we waited for the approval of our admin before we launched these services. So here are the types of posts that we include in our page. We have photos, text, links, events, and views. So the primary purpose of our page is to promote our library. So we post about our trainings, our events, relevant announcements regarding to the university and the library, and also promote our services, resources, and announcements and news regarding the library. And we also post about the accomplishments of our faculty, graduate staff, and students. So if there are acceptable posts, there are also posts we are trying to avoid, such as personal posts, birthdays, and pictures. As much as possible, we don't post that. If they are, we don't post anything unrelated to the library or the university. And one rule we try to follow is we don't endorse any person, product, service, or organization. So we formulated some guidelines in replying to comments and messages so that the people who are tasked to handle our page also have consistent answers. So as a rule, we always use English. And if we share our posts, for example, if we share somebody else's posts, we try to credit the original poster. As much as possible, we don't use CTTO to also respect the copyright of the original owner. We try to follow privacy guidelines about the library client's information. And sometimes, nuisance users can't be avoided. So we don't entertain nuisance users. We try to, to confirm that the page is only for legit requests. So sometimes you have to ban if necessary. So this is our library Facebook page, which you can visit at facebook.com slash CPU library. So why did we choose a Facebook page? Uh, the library already had its own Facebook page, but it was not active. But we wanted to use it because it already had 2,000 likes. So here are some of our top posts on our page. So the first picture, after our copyright webinar, we decided to make simple infographics to also share to our audience who may not have attended the webinar about the uh, general ideas and important ideas about copyright. So this one reached around 12,000 people because not only, it wasn't only for CPU because librarians, libraries, teachers also shared it. 
And the second picture is one of our notable Centralians recently died. And the memorial service was held in the library. It was virtual. We posted about it. And since Perfecto Yasai was quite popular in the country, many people shared it. So it reached around 9,600 people. And for the third picture, it was one of the new things in our university. So instead of scanning your thumb for the bibliometrics, this one, you, you only have to scan your ID and you don't have to touch anything. So we included this one because the system was inspired by the login log out system in the, used in the library. So thanks to Vince, here are some of our memes that we made for our page. Sometimes you don't have to take your page seriously. These are just some of our ideas to generate engagement for our page. And we also share open access resources and links to information that our users might find useful. So we officially launched our services last June 22. And these are the insights and the statistics of our Facebook page. So in the period of one month since we started, our posts have already reached around 42,000 people. So tips to maintain a Facebook page. So when we launched these services, we also tried to inform our faculty, our staff about the new services. So to maintain and market a Facebook page, if you choose to create a Facebook page to promote your library. So one thing we did was we joined Facebook groups focused on Centralians. So there are some popular Facebook groups such as In the Dumps for Students, Positive Decentralians for Alumni, and other public groups. So we share our posts in these big groups and we also promote our activities there. So another tip is to keep your post schedule consistent to maintain audience engagement. So this is where the content calendar may come in. Also, try to assess your user's behavior when, if they reduce your, your page or if, if the page reached them. So we try to also evaluate our post reach. That for example, on weekdays, we don't have, oh, I mean, on weekdays, there is more reach and engagement than on weekends. Also, if you have noticed, in our presentation, we use royal, blue, and gold, which are the official colors of the university. So as part of our branding and to keep visual consistency, we also use this color, color, color scheme when we design our graphics. So for Chat Bertha, Vince will be talking more about her. Uh, so, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Vince uh, Balbuco, and I'm going to present uh, about um, our Facebook presence, personal app, um, called um, Chat Bertha. So, uh, Bertha is a virtual library assistant or a personal character uh, created for the VRS or for our um, virtual reference service. So, she is based uh, on Anna Bertha Hoover, uh, first librarian of the university um, from 1910 to 1940. And uh, it was officially launched uh, last June 22, uh, 2020. So this is uh, the original um, real um, Anna Bertha. So, from June 22 to July 29, 2020, here is uh, uh, Berta's stats. So, so far, um, it got 124 messaging connections. So, how do we run Berta? So, uh, first we created an official email in sending uh, our scan or uh, our scan documents or our answers. So, yeah, this is important uh, in order for us to track uh, our previous um, answers to the queries. So there is a schedule 
uh, of librarians are assigned to answer to so one librarian for each day of the week, uh, seven days a week. So we decided to cater clients um, during weekends. We are in the process of creating and compiling an FAQ or frequently asked questions for our future transactions. Um, automatic responses are set up during library closed hours. So we, uh, uh, we are open uh, or our uh, Facebook um, chat box are uh, usually active during um, 8 a.m. to 5 uh, p.m. So there is also a group chat uh, that we created where librarians can discuss how to answer questions. And though there, are, there is a librarian assigned to manage the chat, uh, concerns regarding specific subject, college, or department is forwarded or consulted with the assigned subject librarian. So guidelines for communication. Uh, so for those who receive a longer, more complex query, it is his or her responsibility to resolve or close the transaction. So if it goes beyond the duty hours, a proper turnover and follow-up must be done. So this is important uh, because uh, we need to uh, maintain a um, consistency in answering. And uh, yeah, this is also important because uh, we can track on where we stop or where we can continue in, uh, in answering the client's needs. So next is use the official virtual reference assistance uh, assistance account when answering queries to inform everyone about the transaction. This will help everyone see that the query uh, is completed or not. So for consistency, consistency purposes, uh, we we must make sure that we are always um, using the VRS account. So as a subject librarian for assistance. Uh, using the HMS or the group chat we intended to create for the VRS group. So tips uh, in being or answering as Bertha. So uh, always call them by their name. So calling them by their name will create an atmosphere of closeness and comfortable um, communication. So use smileys properly. So smileys can lighten up the mood of the conversation. It will not be too formal. Uh, next is be enthusiastic. Uh, this is important because um, this will also create a positive atmosphere. Remember that positive atmosphere will uh, result to good conversation, which will dominate to good service, uh, which will also reflect your library and institution as a whole. Uh, you, you must also remember that you are Bertha and not yourself. So you must separate your own identity. Um, emotions, biases, etc. This will help you in controlling your uh, stress. So we have here a jargon motto that we that we follow. So when in doubt, yeah, don't. So uh, when you when you don't know what to say or answer, the best way for that moment is not to answer yet. Uh, ask first from your uh, colleagues. Uh, to have an accurate response. Treat, uh, next is treat your client as a long-time close friend. So treating your clients as a long close friend will help you establish a form of closeness on the conversation and therefore um, they are more comfortable in answering uh, or asking uh, more queries. <coughs> Don't be afraid to ask and clarify. Remember that the, our aim here is to um, answer or help our clients in what we need. So how can we help in the first place if we do not um, know what exactly what they want? So um, in, uh, in order for you to, to know what they want, um, don't be afraid to ask or clarify things. Uh, next is let your chatmate lead the way. Uh, our client must lead uh, on what they want. Yeah. Um, in the course of um, chatting or interviewing them on what they need, uh, we tend to anticipate, but we do not impose. So we are here to support them. So let them lead the way in searching. 
So use words that, that are safe and politically correct. So avoid answering them using words that might cross some boundaries. This includes racial words, gender insensitive words, or uh, etc. Uh, proof uh, next next is proofread before reading. So check your grammar, punctuations, wordings, um, etc. Before sending. So you, because you cannot delete the chat bubbles sent in in, in your BRS. Uh, next is save the conversation. So um, sometimes we send misspelled words or replies that are somehow far from the question from to us. So do not panic. Think of a way to save the conversation. Uh, you could ask for help. Remember that your um, colleagues are your lifelines. So be the last to reply with positive tone. So always be the last to reply. Make sure that your client's needs are addressed. Yeah, yes, um, usually we ask them, um, are there other con concerns that uh, we can help you with or the likes? Just to make sure that our clients are satisfied in our Okay, so usually we are the last to reply with uh, thank you and welcome. Of course, we do not uh, forget the smiley. So there are queries that takes time to answer, so give yourself time to read. So as much as we want to address the needs of our clients immediately or in one chat, there are um, queries that will, uh, will um, surely take time. Sometimes it will take days, then days. All that matters is we have a constant line of communication with them, reminding them that uh, we will update them as soon as possible. So uh, do not put too much pressure on yourself. So give time, uh, give yourself time to breathe and think on what to do next. Uh, next is response to those nuisance clients with respect. Ban them if necessary. So. Uh, those nuisance clients are still our clients, so we need to treat them with respect. So, but uh, if things are getting out of hand, you can ban them uh, for for your uh, advantage. So here are the tips uh, on your BRS team. So keep an open line of communication. So each librarian per person who are uh, part of the VRS or answering as your VRS uh, must keep an eye, open mind for suggestions. Uh, next is remember that Bertha is not you and vice versa. So you must always separate yourself from Bertha. Uh, after your schedule, you are not Bertha anymore. So do not uh, absorb or overthink the negative things if there is any. Don't to Bertha or to your VRS. Uh, this is the same the other way around. So uh, you must always uh, have uh, a strong boundary between work and between your uh, private uh, life. So next is rest is important as work. So remember that your mental health is as important as your physical health. Rest if you must. So this is to avoid burnout out in your part. This is why scheduling is uh, very important. Next is uh, maintain a healthy line of educated sports. So remember that we are all here professionals here. So if there is a thing that needs clarification or discussion, you have an educated and professional conversation together with the people involved. Usually the head needs to, uh, needs to intervene with this uh, and to set settle this as soon as possible. Uh, for the for it to avo avoid um, conflict amongst his or her subordinates or colleagues. Uh, next is you must uh, be knowledgeable with your products and services. So you must have a prior knowledge on the services and options that your library can offer to your clients. And next is learn to acknowledge mistakes and learn to comment correctly. So a pat on the shoulder, which is not um, applicable right now. So we will go for a single, uh, even a single uh, and simple, oh, congratulations, uh, double ban will, will, will go a long way. Yeah, uh, appreciation is very important. 
So the way you answer is part of your branding. So whatever you do as your BRS or in our case as Berta is part of our branding. So you must always be mindful of your actions. Next is always make sure that you are using Berta's account in answering. So one of the main problems in using um, BRS or Berta is the confusion of making comments or answers using our personal FB or the other way around. So please be mindful of the account being used. So create light mode in your social media. So then, if there is none, um, you create one. So in a world where everything is serious, injecting light humor is always fun. So we create memes and participate in challenges or holiday greetings. So if there is none, create your own and make sure that it will work. So branding, this contains uh, content, color, and creativity. So the best marketing tool is your goods or bits. In the sphere of social, social media, your content or branding is very important because this is your um, somehow trademark. Your branding is you, remember that. Uh, be creative uh, because uh, your content is you. When you have captured the interest of the viewing public or your audience, they will share your content, your page, your posts, etc. openly uh, and freely. So you must always remember that they are your best marketing tool. Yeah, so uh, next is caption captures your clients. So in every post that we make, we always think of a uh, caption that can capture our client. Um, our captions are also part of our branding. So, so we must uh, create a, a write-up that is uh, worth reading for. Uh, next is use appropriate, appropriate hashtags. So hashtags are also tools in tracking our previous and future um, posts. Uh, it could also uh, help us organize our posts. Uh, for example, if we if we are going to um, track like uh, all our posts that uh, concerns with memes, we could uh, easily search our our hashtag uh, that we use there in every post, like uh, hashtag memes, hashtag challenge, uh, something like that. So FAQs for Bertha. So. Um, so far, uh, the questions that we have uh, received uh, as Bertha are questions about the library hours, if we are open, and some COVID-19 concerns. We also receive requests or questions for specific books or um, resources, and inquiries regarding scanning and document delivery. And they are also asking us um, for our webinars. But uh, there are some that uh, just read Bertha out of uh, curiosity. So some of the challenges that we uh, encountered are electricity and internet connection. So due to the fact that uh, we are online, we are heavily dependent um, on electricity and internet connection. Um, luckily, our university has a strong power supply or strong power backup supply. And we have a stable internet connection, so we we often uh, do our BRS duties here in the library. So next is coordination and communication. So um, this is very important because uh, this will help you um, sail your boat smoothly. So in our case here in CPU, um, coordination and communication is somehow easy because um, we are situated in a single building. However, um, the uh, library of uh, elementary, uh, junior high school, senior high school, and kinder are separated. But even though they are separated, uh, the main entry point of inquiry here is Bertha. So um, the faculties uh, teaching in the elementary will, uh, will, all, will also uh, chat Bertha regarding their inquiries. And all we just need to do is uh, pass the pass the inquiry to the librarian in charge. In that case, for the in the library, uh, in the elementary librarian. 
So how do we how do we evaluate Bertha? So we are compiling uh, screenshots uh, in this manner of successful or finished transactions for future reference and classification. Uh, we are also constantly trying to improve our approach, minimize errors in answering, and faster response time. So for our future plans, uh, we intend to create another, another social media platforms like in Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, etc. So we also intend to have create a section in our pages and websites uh, for our frequently asked questions and in the future that uh, there will be more transactions which we look forward to, we might subscribe to a chatbot. So that's our presentation and we are very glad to, to present this to you. So um, if there is any question, uh, we are uh, very open to answer it. Sir Este. Okay, thank you very much, Sir Vince, for the Ma'am Aliana for the presentation. Um, we have here gathered some questions already uh, via chat through our webinar jam. For those of you who are watching via uh, YouTube, you may also send your questions to us or, or post your questions on our YouTube account right now. Um, Sir Vince, Sam Aliana, are you with us? Good morning. We have here a few questions from Good morning. participants. Good morning. So um, one question here is that how can you reach your customers or how can we reach our customers considering that this time is pandemic? So for that question, as we said, uh, try to analyze your audience first. Do your users use email, Facebook? So then try to find a means that the be for the best way to communicate your users. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are using only Facebook. Um, some of our users are using email. So we could all also use uh, other means of communication in reaching our patrons and clients. Okay, thank you. Another question here. Is Bertha Chat a free subscribe media platform? How to avail this? Can you please uh, give us further information about Chat Bertha? Uh, in regards, if you want to Chat Bertha, of course it's free. You simply send us a message. But we did not subscribe to anything. Actually, it's the librarians who still answer the questions. To make it clear, Bertha is simply a persona. She's like a marketing tool because it's easier for the clients to remember nga they just chat Bertha if they need something from the library. So it's very easy to remember because they can remember Bertha. So as for that question, it is still our librarians who answer the questions. So daily, we have one librarian assigned to answer, to man the page to check it, to check the messages for Bertha. Actually, we. We also tried to acquire an automatic chat that's, that when the user when, when the user asks a question, there's an automatic response. So we use we tried chat fuel, but it has a it has a price as a, a subscription fee. But actually, if you set up a chatbot, you you are still the one going to set up the answers. So while we are at the first stages of Bertha. We are still compiling the frequently asked questions in our library. So maybe eventually in the future, we will acquire a chatbot. But for now, since pandemic and libraries are medyo may problemas sa budget ngayon, so as much as possible, we try to use free resources. So dito sa page namin, it's just us. And Bertha is just the face, parang ganun. As, um, in case na some, someone is asking if it is a subscribe software or something, uh, in in chat Bertha, we are only using Facebook. Uh, that is why um, um, Bertha's messenger is connected in our uh, official library Facebook page. Okay, thank you, Sir Vince, Ma'am Al. Another question here. Good morning. 
um, nawawala daw yung website niya always. <laughs> what can you say or what can you uh, suggest further? And um, what app did you use for Bertha to automatically welcome its clients? So regard regarding our website po, may time na may time na nawala talaga siya kasi there was a glitch with the webmaster. So if you visit our website right now, it's new it's and we are app. in the process of updating it. As for the what apps did you use to automatically welcome clients? Actually, you have in the Facebook pages, if you explore, there is an option where you can, if someone chats, uh, there's a, there is an automatic reply. So if you try to chat our page, you can, you notice that Bertha will automatically say, hi, John, I'm Bertha. So it's in it's a feature in the Facebook pages. It, we put that so in case there's no one manning the page, there is still someone replying, just so they can know that, hey, we're, we're active and we will get back to you. Um, the Messenger application on the Facebook has a lot of features and the uh, automatic uh, response uh, is one of them. Uh. So they could always uh, uh, check the settings of the Facebook Messenger app. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, another question here, how do you handle nuisance inquiries in chat Bertha? How do you handle oh, nuisance um, <laughs> we, we could, uh, Yeah, there will there will always be someone who is uh, a nuisance client. Uh, so we should always respect them because uh, basically they are also our clients. So um, we just clarify them that we only entertain um, our, uh, queries regarding our library and our services. So, uh, but. But uh, we 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 already had one, just one so far. Just one so far. But uh, uh, it, we we banned him. Yes. I think we banned him because it's not healthy anymore. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, we always stick to the policy. Yeah. So that's uh, important. Okay. So we have a lot of questions for you. I, I guess this is very helpful because we know that we are all uh, working. Uh, for the, the, the students and faculty members right now. So another question here, um, is it safe that we are not violating any copyright law so far when we are doing your uh, document delivery? Uh, uh, for our document delivery, ma'am, um, for the, uh, for example, for the scanning, we only allow 20% uh, of the uh, content of the book. Yeah. So in order for us to track that, we uh, ask for the details of uh, our client, like uh, their uh, their name and what subject uh, and what book they, they want to be reproduced. And we also calculate the content and, the, uh, and we uh, inform them ahead of time that we only allow 20% of the document. And so last time we also had a webinar on copyright. So if you check our page, we also have infographics regarding copyright. So if you have questions about copyright, I think we covered it in our page and in the webinar. So as much as possible, we try to follow copyright laws and fair use. We also cite them. And we give the proper citation and we always remind them that these materials are for your use only and they are not to be redistributed. Okay, um, since we are live right now all over the Philippines and I think uh, even uh, outside our country, we have participants from Asian countries, uh, there is a question here, does chat Bertha cater questions for those who are not connected or enrolled for CPU? Yes, yes ma'am. Um, actually, we, uh, for example, we have uh, a client from USA that wants to have a copy of the book. So um, for now, we are just still adjusting because the policies for from the normal, a previous normal, is different from the new normal now. So we are still consulting with our administration regarding the fees and uh, uh, the mode of uh, payment and etc. So uh, we are still uh, on the process of that, but we are uh, also updating our clients for the uh, opportunities. Yes, and so far, many alumni of CPU have also asked us questions. So if they have information requests, we also cater to them. 
Okay, thank you, ma'am, sir. Uh, another question here regarding your scanning services so far. Uh, how many students you can accommodate in a day? And do you have any maximum uh, range for uh, it? Like sir. Yes, sir. Okay, um, since you're just starting our scanning services, uh, there is just uh, few students who, uh, no, who who avail the scanning services. Uh, they they use uh, the scan documents for their subjects since our university is offering um, online classes now. So uh, they just um, emailed us regarding what book they wanted to reproduce. Yeah, and same policies are implemented. So uh, for the maximum catering, uh, I think we had. Uh, None, none. Um, as much as possible, we we want to cater uh, as much uh, clients as we uh, as we can. But uh, if uh, if in case that we cannot deliver on time, we just update them that we could uh, deliver maybe tomorrow or or something like that. Okay, thank you, Sir Vince. Um, okay, I'm screening some of the questions. You've already answered some of them. How much is the budget? I think they mentioned already it's for free, right? Because it's just a Facebook account. How do you create your FB page for the library? And is it linked to your personal account? Or can you suggest, uh, what can you suggest to a one-man librarian who is manning the library? Is it appropriate to create uh, using your own personal account or create an account using your library? Uh. Actually, if you create a page on Facebook, you first have to have a Facebook profile. So anyone with a Facebook profile can create a page. So the, actually, the, the page, all of us librarians are assigned as the administration. So someone before launched it, and we're, we're now all the admins. So if you are a one-man librarian, actually creating a Facebook page is a really good and free way to promote your library. It is really a broad topic. So I would suggest that if you're on Facebook, you explore the features because if you have a Facebook account, you can create a page. Actually, we, we don't have any formal training in social media or anything. We're just exploring. Actually, because I blog at Pagmita Librarian, this is very familiar to me. And I've been using Facebook pages since 2016, so I also applied what I learned from four years of blogging in marketing our Facebook page. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Al. Uh, there is a question from Ma'am Annalisa. What if two libraries, maybe libraries is what she meant uh, here, what if there are two libraries which has the same VRS, not knowing that someone has already used that VRS? Would there be any case so far? Bertha, is oh, VRS is... Okay, so um, the VRS is not the brain child of um okay the concept of VRS is the virtual reference service so uh, any school or any library could adopt that but we uh, uh, let let just let us just be clear that Berta is under the umbrella of VRS so you could always uh, venture to another social media platform or create another um, way of of uh, uh, making your VRS work. So in our case, for us uh, in, here in CPU, uh, we uh, we see that uh, our Facebook is uh, a great avenue for making our VRS efforts effective. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, Vince and Mam Aliana, there are a lot of questions here posted for <laughs> For both of yes, ma'am, Aliana, you still want to say something? In our virtual reference services, we we really ask permission from, from our admin to establish these services. So as much as possible, we work, we try to be consistent. For example, in the elementary school library, they also have a free Facebook page. But in our procedure, if there are questions for the library, the elementary school librarian will simply ask it to Bertha. So as much as possible, we try to have a consistent and, and, and uh, institutionalized processes. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Uh, as much as you wanted to answer your 
questions, we would like to pause for a while as we are going to continue our regional conference with three more speakers and presenters. Thank you very much, Ma'am Al and Sir Vitz, for joining us today. Uh, we're going to save all the questions here and we can reach you maybe by via your email or you will send this uh, together with your presentation so you can have a copy of what they had presented earlier. Okay, so to continue on with our um, regional conference, let me uh, please allow me to introduce our three more presenters for today. We have various topics here which can be very useful in our field. Our first, our second presenter, our third presenter rather, who will talk um, about understanding the psychological impact of COVID-19 outbreak among librarians is a psychiatrist specializing in drug addiction. He has his high school, he had his high school and college education at the University of the Philippines Visayas and got his Doctor of Medicine degree from the West Visayas State University. He finished his general psychiatry residency training from the UPPGH. He has a graduate certificate in alcohol and drug studies from the University of Adelaide in Australia and a Master of Science in Addiction Studies from the Joint Program of University of Adelaide in Australia, King's College London in UK and Virginia Community, Commonwealth University in the United States. He is a training officer of the Department of Psychiatry at the West Visayas State University Medical Center and a program director of Dynamic Psychiatry Institute, which is a substance abuse and psychiatric rehabilitation center. His private clinic is in the Spice Building of St. Paul, Paul's Hospital, Iloilo City. He is currently the Western Visayas Coordinator of Doctors in Touch. He was the past president of the Iloilo Medical Society, UP College of Medicine, PGH Alumni Association, UP Alumni Association, Iloilo, and a former member of the Board of Directors of the Philippine Psychiatric Association. He is married to Professor Maria Pilar Charmaine Servigon Malata of West Visayas State University College of Medicine, and they have a 22-year-old daughter, Anne. Our third presenter is Dr. Ruel Malata. Our next presenter after him had earned both a master's degree at UP Diliman and vendor certification from Microsoft, Cisco, CCDA, EC Council, uh, EC Seas Council CISO, among others. He came from an entrepreneurial background, having started several businesses ranging from ISP, data centers, call centers, BPO, and had gained a lot of experience and insights that could be leveraged in helping other businesses to succeed. He had his master's in ITPM and a SCS Gold Medal Awardee, awardee he, or a top cohort at the National University of Singapore. Oh, by the way, he graduated BSBA at the University of the Philippines in Diliman, Magna Cum Laude. And he has a lot of certifications as a certified rapid minor analyst for big data, big data visualization of the Blue Desktop 9 qualified associate, PMIP and P certified 2008 certified big data analyst. His ITIL V3.0 foundation certified in 2009. Microsoft certified in a certified 70-282 designing, deploying, and managing network solutions for a small and medium-sized businesses. He is well known in his field. In fact, he was awarded as Easy Council Certified Chief Information Security Officer and Google Awards Certified. He is Microsoft MVP for the most valuable professional Windows Media Media and ranked fourth in placer during the CPA exam in 1984. He had um, his well-known projects, in fact, um, not only here in the Philippines, but even abroad. Among his community projects are projectbass.org, which used to measure Philippine internet bandwidth with crowdsourcing, and mosquito sensor using IoT and sound sensors to identify mosquito species and sex based on wing bit frequency or sensors placed in orbit traps. And among his work experiences, is currently is a technology columnist of Manila Bulletin and right now is a mid at the MD Future Region International in Singapore. Our fourth presenter is Mr. Wilson Chua. And of course, the last but not the least, we'll talk about Health Information Seeking Behavior of Librarians and Library Users is a librarian and a professor. Over the past two decades, 
She has worked a variety of professional capacities, especially in private academia. She earned her Master of Education, major in Library Science at the Philippine Normal University in Manila, and graduated her Doctor of Philosophy major in Educational Management at the University of Perpetual Health System, Laguna. She's affiliated with international and national organizations such as Philippine Association of Medical Journal Editors, Asia Pacific Association of Medical Journal Editors, Medical and, Al and Health Librarians Association of the Philippines, or MALAP, the Philippine Association of Teachers in Library Science, the Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated, Southern Tagalog Region Librarians Council, and currently an auditor of the Ply National Board of Trustees. She has published articles on international peer reviewed journals and presented several international papers in Asia Pacific in library information and education practice and the Asia Pacific Association of Medical Editors. Currently, she serves as the Chief Librarian of University of Perpetual Health, Dr. Sergi Tamayo Medical University in Binan, Laguna, where she is also an ISO 2015 Internal Auditor and a Pakokoa Accreditor at the same time. Our presenter for these in health information seeking behavior for topic four is Dr. Maria Lindy Dimasalindo. Shall we uh, pause for a while and listen to these three presenters? Good morning to the members of the Philippine Librarian Association Incorporated and the Western Visayas Region Librarians Council. So I'm Dr. Malata and I'm a psychiatrist. My task this morning is to talk to you about the understanding the psychological impact of COVID-19 outbreak among librarians. <clears throat> so, I think one major change for our librarians is there will be no face-to-face -face contact in the opening of classes and most of our students would be taking their lessons online and probably the work that you would be assigned is to set up a virtual library to support the change in the way classes would be conducted during this time. <clears throat> Not only that, there's an alarming increase of COVID cases in Indonesia today resulting to our back to GCQ status. There's an increase in <laughs> COVID cases in our PC4 complex, in our uh, BPOs, and even in our hospitals. So you, you have heard of lockdowns in the different barangays, in the different hospitals. But the sad state of our economy is most alarming because we have learned that there are at least a 45% unemployment rate and that could be considered as disastrous. Uh, Jalibi has announced that 250 of its stores would close and even leading brands have decided to close their flagship stores and to maintain business online. So you have heard of closing of H&M, Guess, Gap, Victoria's Secret, etc. And worldwide, uh, in the United States, according to the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, they did the survey and they found out that two out of five uh, people have mental health issues and that there's alarming increase in depression, anxiety, suicide, and violence 
in the United States. And I believe there's also the same alarming rate of increase in depression and anxiety in the Philippines because of our frequent lockdowns has led to concern routines and plans, social isolation. Of course, with the opening of classes, there's still the absence of school structure, the ever-increasing unemployment rate, and the financial worries of how are we going to feed 100 million Filipinos, and the issue of violence, domestic violence in our homes. <clears throat> so we are all affected. Our reality affects our thoughts, emotions, and behavior. So it starts with the thought. What we think affects our emotions, how we feel, and it affects how we act or how we behave. So how are you affected? We are affected in order to understand uh, its psychological effect. We are affected in five areas, mentally, emotionally, physically, behaviorally, and of course, spiritually. How are you affected? <clears throat> mentally, what's in your mind? What are you thinking? We might be afraid that we might get infected and that we will die or that our families might be infected. So that gives us worries and fears. Emotionally, how do you feel? So because of what you think, it affects how you feel. Because you think that you will die, you will experience anxiety anger, sadness, you get easily distracted, you feel edgy, and you may feel unappreciated. Physically, uh, it may manifest as headache, back pain, abdominal discomfort, palpitations, shortness of breath, tremors. So, you just begin uh, to feel uh, discomfort in your body, like sweating, tremors, these are symptoms of anxiety. Behaviorally, what behavior or actions are you showing? Sometimes we may catch ourselves staring bluntly and not talking to, to people, not talking to friends. We may feel like crying, deep sighing, isolating, uh, and we want to be alone. And especially during this lockdown, that we feel isolated from our loved ones and our friends. Spiritually, what has changed in your spirituality? I believe that it has resulted to people praying more. There has been a lot of organized uh, prayer, time for prayer, you know, different associations, different groups, and even among our classmates. While some people has lost hope, they doubt God. If you doubt God, you will feel discouraged, and there's even a sense of hopelessness. So, my dear librarians, how are you? How affected are you? Can you do, gauge yourself? You know, zero, you're not affected at all. Five, very affected. So, not affected at all, or very affected. So, no matter how affected we are, it's okay not to be okay. This is the title of a popular K-drama that mm -hmm. I watched recently in Netflix. It's okay not to be okay. 
stress becomes pathologic when emotions are intense and they last longer than necessary and when it affects your sleep, appetite, daily function, and desire to live. So, it's a warning signal, but it, if it affects your physical, social, and emotional functioning, then it becomes pathologic. So, yes, we are affected, but the most important thing, question is, how are you coping? How are you being able to manage? So these are suggested healthy ways of coping. Let's take them up one by one. So our well-being is consists of various factors. So in order to have a good well-being, we must be okay biologically, psychologically, socially, and spiritually. So all of these factors has to work together for us to have a good well-being. So let's talk about coping skills in the different areas. These are the suggested ways to cope. Biologically, it is still important to eat well. Eat three times a day. Eat green and leafy vegetables. Eat lots of fruits. In other words, eat a healthy diet and eat regularly. Exercise, we need to go jogging, we may jog around the house. Uh, biking, uh, basketball, or any sport that uh, helps you to exercise. <clears throat> Sleep is very important, so don't spend too much time watching social media, so you need six to eight hours of sleep every day. Take your vitamins together with your prescribed medications. If you have hypertension, diabetes, you should take your maintenance medications as well as your supplements. Observe the prescribed precaution. What are the prescribed precautions? We should wear our masks whenever we go out. We should, we are now required to wear even face shield. We should wash our hands with soap and water and alcohol when we have contacts with people. And most of all is social distancing. Keep yourself from crowded places and maintain six feet distance from each other. So with universal precaution, we are able to keep ourselves from being infected. Psychological, we have, we have to acknowledge our emotions. It's okay to be sad, it's okay to be angry, it's okay to be bored. So it's okay not to be okay, it's okay to change emotions from time to time. But most important is we should manage our thoughts. We should avoid bad thoughts because unpleasant thoughts cause unpleasant feelings and causes unpleasant actions. We should deal with the here and now. Forget the past because past is past. And the future is another tomorrow. And we are not in control of our tomorrow. What we are in control is today. What you do today affects your tomorrow. So focus on the here and now. Focus on what you can do today. Do nature walking. It's good to visit the farm, go to the beach, go to climb a mountain because these are relaxing activities and they help ward off our anxiety. So I go to the farm once a week. Deep breathing exercise. If you're anxious, you do deep breathing. Simplify your routines. Focus. Focus on one task at a time. Uh, the results are better than more time. 
cultivate optimism. Believe that we will be able to overcome these things will pass. So, practice a sense of humor. Humor is when we laugh at ourselves, we laugh at our mistakes, we laugh at our situation. Humor is a mature form of defense. Read encouraging books. We want to learn, we want to get knowledge. So read a lot of books because we now have the time to read. So as librarians, uh, you have all the books and resources with you. So I know you love reading, so read books that you are interested in gain more knowledge. Social, reach out to people. Because the problem of lockdown is self-isolation. So talk to a friend. You can talk to a friend by a text message, by a Facebook messenger, or by a Zoom. You can talk to your friends all over the world. Engage in enjoyable activities. What activities make you happy? You like to play? Start a new hobby. Cooking, painting, gardening. Any hobby. And I would like to emphasize limit news and social media exposure because news and fake news, particularly in social media, causes a strain in us. No? They cause negative emotion, they cause us to be angry, they cause us to be irritable. So by I, I don't uh, listen to the news anymore because a lot of them are fake news anyway. Spiritual. So when you are faced with a task, something that is greater than yourself, it reminds us to turn to talk to God in prayer. Very important to pray every day, to pray for protection, to pray for guidance, to pray for strength, for courage. You need to be strong and courageous. Listen to God through his word. You need to study our Bible, read the Bible. Uh, attend worship service. Um, if there are, uh, if the churches are closed, we can go online. Trust God and his promises. Listen to praise and worship songs because they are relaxing. And I would like to emphasize, as I've said, read the Bible. In summary, acknowledge your emotions and do not take it as a sign of weakness. Desire to be more positive. Manage your thoughts, feelings, and behavior. Be mindful of others. You are not alone. Engage others in conversation. Talk to your friends. Reach out to people. Show compassion to others. We are in this together. So not only librarians are affected, doctors too. So as engineers and lawyers, everybody is affected. Use this time wisely, especially this isolation, this lockdown, to nurture relationship with your family and friends. Extend, in number seven, enjoy extended time with family. So I'm so grateful and glad that because of this lockdown, uh, for the past six years, this is the only time that our family is intact. Our daughter has been away from home for the last six years. And now we are together for the last five months. So I'm enjoying this time. And I know that we may never pass this way again. Be assured of God's love, care, and sovereignty. Find daily strength as you seek to grow in your relationship with Him. So it is very important to have a strong relationship with God. Hold on to your faith that is your anchor amidst the trials of life. Nurture a sense of hope, gratitude, and purpose. You are not alone. As I have said, we are in this 
together. So be strong, take heart, and remember God is in control. Cast all your anxieties upon Him because He cares for you. Thank you and have a wonderful morning. Thank you very much, Dr. Malata, for uh, that presentation. We would like to check if uh, Mr. Chua is with us. Please reserve all, all your questions. We're going to answer all your questions later after the three presentations. Uh, Sir Chua, Mr. Wilson Chua, are you with us? Hello. Yes, sir. Good morning. Welcome po to uh, Fly Western Visayas Region Online Conference. Good morning po and thank you for inviting me. I would now be sharing my screen. So uh, a talk about big data isn't complete if we don't define the five Vs that define big data. And so these are volume, variety, velocity, veracity, and finally, value. And my presentation will hopefully share some of the ideas on how librarians can help increase the value of data. Here we use big data to help us visualize how effective countries are in fighting COVID. In the ASEAN region, unfortunately, the Philippines has the highest daily and highest total COVID cases. Now we need to ask ourselves why. And for that, we turn to the analysis made by Mr. Andre Diamante, who's now based in Melbourne. Um, he made the a time series analysis on the average days it takes from the time of onset of the disease to the time the results are re, uh, released by the uh, official authorities. And that I submit that this is because of bureaucratic inefficiencies. Uh, the DOH is still using analog methods of capturing and disseminating the test results. Uh, this contributes to a very long delay. And as you can see, uh, Andre Diamante has clocked it at almost 14 days. And in that 14 days, the infected individual could have been passing um, and infecting others through three generations. No? And so this was also corroborated by insights made by Ms. Christine Briones when she measured the effectiveness of contact tracing per region. This is very fresh, and she just uh, shared this with me this morning. Um, we find that regions with the lowest numbers of average identified contacts per positive individual are also the regions that suffer from the most COVID infections. And as in most cases, effective data analytics should bring about actionable insights. In this case, the data tells us the story that we need to shorten the days to release test results. And we also need to increase the average number of contacts traced per positive individuals. In our case, uh, our work with FASTEC semiconductors allowed us to also employ advanced network graph analytics to help us predict where COVID will strike next. In this map, we are showing three persons who are highlighted in blue in the social network graph. The pink one is the location where they ate their lunch. Now suppose that person 1428 in the upper middle um, were to become COVID positive later on. We can then use the social interaction map to easily show FASTEC that the persons 195 and person 1645 may also have been infected by the nature of their social interaction of having meals together in the same location. Next, here's a case where 
uh, Senator Gachalian's office asked us for insights into the internet situation for DepEd's blended learning. We then helped them by using DepEd's data to show where the schools are located. Here you will see in the map they're located, they're represented by the small housing icons. So each of those housing icons represent a DepEd public school. Next, we then superimpose the cell sites that we have been able to collect based on our volunteers' work at projectbus.org. Then finally, we use QGIS tools to show the nearest cell sites that each school would likely connect to. And in this process, we are able to visually highlight areas that needs more cell sites. Now, sharp users will also note that DepEd's data contains some factual DPS errors. There should be no oceans, uh, no schools in the middle of ocean. Next, in the fight against dengue, we also use satellite data, more specifically data that shows us the areas where there are both water and vegetation. When you have areas that have these two criteria, they are most likely to contain stagnant water. And as we all know, stagnant water are usually the preferred places for mosquitoes to breed. This insight can help LGUs conduct anti-mosquito measures like releasing Gambicia affinis, which are mosquito fish that likes to eat mosquito larvae, and or the release of BTI, Bacillus thuringiensis israelensis toxin, in helping to kill mosquito larvae. Now, this action, when combined with cleanliness drives and anti-mosquito fogging, helps to drive down infections. In Bunuan Bukig, we were able to help drive down dengue cases to zero. So if you are now excited about what you can do as librarians in leveraging big data analytics in your work, here are some six roles that you can consider. First, we talked about the data archivist. The data archivist is the person that curates and shares the information. They typically look not only for books, literature, or research material, but in this day and age, they also look for sources of data. They need to curate and then share this to their users. Typical questions that they are faced with is, you know, what programs will my users be using? And collaterally, Depending on the programs, you will need to also figure out the formats that the data should be in. And also the questions like what structure and what terminologies to be used as well. Next, we come to the data librarians. They are our human search engines with a heart. And a, prop and a very good data librarian can help data analysts like us save up to 80% of our time with each of our data analytics project by helping us and guiding us to the right sources of materials. Next, we come to the role of the data engineer. The data engineer is somebody that helps pre-process the data for analytics. So here you can see a actual uh, record from the SAIR that was uh, given and shared to us by Mr. Stephen Alayon. Now, you will notice that the requester email name and address are blanked out. This is for reasons of data privacy. That's one of the roles that data engineers should do. The next would be to extract data from a field. Like in this case, the address field, we need to extract the country so that we can do analysis by country. Also, we need to create, sometimes data engineers need to create fields from other fields. So in this case, we'd like to know the usage pattern, um, whether this is for thesis, dissertation, or research. Then finally, you know, the data engineer needs to convert formats. Some of the data may be in PDF, but as you and I know, data analytics cannot work with PDF data. So they need to transform that to Excel or CV CSVs. Now comes the one of the more interesting uh, roles that data librarians can do, this is the actual analytics. So using the same SAIR uh, data, we can plot the demand over time and even uh, find peaks and try to find explanations for them. Also, we can project and forecast demand. 
So here, the forecasted demand is the straight blue line, and the shading area are the areas of confidence levels. Next, we can also use the data to show and to show and understand demand that will help librarians and schools to buy better stuff. In this case, uh, we collected the usage of items over time, and we can show that items 480, 1342, and 1599 are the most requested. And so it might be beneficial for the school to invest more in these items. Data analytics can also help use us to understand users better. There are several studies that show that um, students who consume more library materials tend to be more successful academically. And so to help drive higher academic success, we highlight one case study from the Washburn University where they noted that um, a majority of their users were using library materials for thesis work. And so what that insight led to was for them to move their writing uh, lab, which is a tutoring center that helps people write better, um, into the library. And this single move um, helped increase the number of students from about uh, 25 a month to 400 to 450 students a month and increase overall library usage from 108,000 in 2008 to 280,000 the following year. Next also, remember when we asked the data engineer to extract the country, now we are able to un understand the demands placed by global users. So we can find here that the Philippines still number one, but it is closely followed by India, Indonesia, and Malaysia. So therefore, um, this insight may lead us to uh, localize some of the materials to suit the other international users. Next, we come to the data, data journalist. She or he is the one that tells a story. So based on the data and the charge, she could probably write a two-paragraph to say that the University of the Philippines Visayas was among the top users of the SAIR system. The peak activity happened in 2015, blah, blah, blah. So these are in terms that other readers can more easily understand. And he, can, he or she can supplement that with a geographic display of all the places where users uh, came to access the SAIR system. Finally, we come to our sixth role, which is that of the data steward. So the data steward is the data protector of the system. Once you have identified the useful data, the data steward is in charge with the role of protecting that data against any disasters, uh, ensuring business continuity and high availability by maintaining snapshots and backup and archiving the useful information. And so with that, we come to my final slide, which is the call to action. Um, I would suggest that you form yourselves, those of you that are interested to pursue uh, career opportunities in big, big data analytics uh, would be to form yourselves into teams that specialize first in one of the six roles. And then once you are through with those specialization, then you go for generalization where you then shift to other roles so you can un have a better understanding of each of the six roles. And remember when you form teams, diversity really works. Do not be uh, trap into group think by only recruiting members from your same social circle. Finally, you can accelerate le your learning and gain more experience by joining advocacies like projectbus.org, where we help map Philippine internet, the Mosquito Census Group in Facebook, and finally, our Big Data Analytics PH Group in Facebook. And with that, I end my presentation. This is me. And this is how you can contact me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Wilson, for that very informative presentation. It's indeed a, a pleasure for us to uh, have you here.
Um, we will just gather some of the questions our participants had posted in our group chat. As we're going to have our last presenter for this morning, we have Dr. Maria Lindy Masalindo. We will talk about health information seeking behavior of librarians and library users. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I would take this opportunity to thank Fly Western Visayas Region Council for inviting me as one of their speakers. The topic assigned to me is health information seeking behavior of librarians and library users. As librarian, we should keep pace in providing relevant, timely, and sustainable information services. We all know this COVID-19 pandemic has posed significant challenges for all of us. So to start with, here is the outline of my topic. So introduction, health information needs and information seeking behaviors, sources of health information, component of health information seeking behavior, factors of health information seeking behaviors, and my takeaway. What is information needs, information seeking behavior, and health information seeking behavior? Information plays a significant role in our daily, professional, and personal lives, and we are constantly challenged to take charge of the information that we need for work, fun, and everyday decisions and tasks. For my introduction, Health information seeking behavior is broadly viewed as the ways by which individuals obtain information about health, illness, health promotion, and risk to health. That is according to Mills and Todoroba. Information seeking behavior of a user depends on education, access to library, and the length of time a user services to devote to information seeking. Orangio 2011 expresses information needs as a state or process started when one perceives that there is a gap between the information and the knowledge available to solve a problem and the actual solution of the problem. The information needs of individual are enormous and the way they accomplish this is diverse. Also, information is a basic need of human being and is needed by all walks of life. As librarian, we should act to reconcile the gap between the information and the knowledge available. Next, information-seeking behavior deals with behavior and actions exhibited by human beings in their search for information to satisfy diverse information needs according to Abubakar 2010. So information seeking behavior therefore is the purposive seeking of information by individuals as a consequence of a need to satisfy goals. People search information and utilize the same to complete their assigned task. Health is well. This common slogan is everybody's claymore nowadays because of this pandemic. All of us were cautious as to the prevention and transmission of this virus. This figure is a result of the study conducted by Foloronso 2018 in his study, an assessment of health information seeking behavior among librarians in academic libraries in Nigeria. Get these results, health information on various health issues such as blood pressure, control, blood pressure control, food and drugs, cancer, malaria treatment, drug reaction, women health, kidney care, and mental health. Another result, as to their information seeking behavior, 
Librarian showed positive attitude to health information use. Next, they indicated strong interest in seeking health information timely, but they showed negative attitude to health information use. The implication of this study is that librarians sought health information timely with positive attitude and their tendency of living well is highly likely. As to the sources of information, internet, radio, Facebook, television, and books serves as a top main sources that they consulted with. Another study by HATU 2011 entitled Surprising Decline in Consumers Seeking Health Information. The chart illustrates where the big drop in health information seeking occurred in print media, including books, magazines, and newspapers, falling by one half from 33% of consumers to 18%. The internet with 33% of consumers searching health information online and friends and family attracting 29% of consumers remained relatively flat as information sources. TV radio dropped 5.6% points down to 10% in 2010. I have here another related study conducted by Cheryl D. and Ellen Stanley, 2005, and here are some of the findings. These are the priority, priority databases that nursing students and clinical nurses use in selecting health information. So we have here the CINAHL, the PubMed, Cancer.gov, and the Medline. Another finding shows also as to the barriers that inhibit their use of electronic databases. The students and clinical nurses prioritize the use of print over electronic databases. Also, no time, lack of skills and training are not needed. And lastly, lack of, lack of computer as their hindrances in using online databases. To sum up the findings, human and print resources continued to be preferred over electronic resources. Books continued to be popular resources. Most were unaware of the library resources available to them and did not know about the many free, reputable health databases that they could access. I came across this local study entitled The Information Seeking Behavior of Aquaculture Researches at the Southeast Asian Fisheries Development Center, CEFDEC in Iloilo by Superio, Panaman, Hako, and Istanbul in 2019. And here are some of the findings. They visited the library infrequently. Highly utilized remote services such as email and phone services, and that is the reason why they visited the library infrequently. Internet via search engines was highly preferred. The combination of print and electronic formats was highly preferred also when reading rather than print only or electronic only. Another related study conducted by Musa Rizzi in 2019 entitled Component of Health Information Seeking Behavior Based on Health Anxiety Among Users of Public Libraries in Esfahan, Iran. And these are all the health information seeking behavior components that was mentioned in the study need for health information, type of health information seeking, diversity of health information sources, time of referring to health information sources, purposefulness of health information seeking, evaluation of reasons for referring to the library, 
barriers to obtaining health information, validity of health information sources. Aside from that, based on the study, they also presented factors affecting the health information seeking behavior. And this includes sociocultural and individual or demographic factors like age, gender, race, educational level, income, information literacy, health literacy, and health status of patients at different stages of the disease. So aside from those factors, health anxiety is one of the important and effective and effective factors in seeking health information due to motivating people to seek health information. So, health anxiety is a continuum of mild and intermittent to excessive concerns known as hypochondrias or hypochondria. So it is a continuum of mild and intermittent to excessive concerns known as hypochondrias, that is health anxiety. So in layman's term, uh, I would say uh, abnormality anxious or we are always worried of our health. I'm sure some of us here experience at this moment because of this COVID-19 pandemic. Diba para tayo minsan napapraning, may konting ubo, natatakot na, more so pag may lagnat. So very timely ito ngayon sa atin, the health anxiety. So what is, to know more about health anxiety, it is the persistent health concerns or fears of a serious illness and excessive worries at the time of the emergence of an illness and the problem based on the misinterpretation of physical signs and symptoms. So here, the misinterpretation here, kaya nga sabi ko, pag umubo ka or umatsing in public places, para, para ka nang tinitingnan ng lahat at sa tingin ng lahat, mayroon ka ng COVID because of this misinterpretation. So, Yung mga taong nakaka-experience ng ganyan, may kunting umubo, umatsing, tumitingin, they are just experiencing health anxiety. Another, an increase in health anxiety is expected to lead to an increase in seeking health information, which in turn increases health anxiety. The more health anxious the person would lead him or her, to seek more information, and this would increase his or her health anxiety. That is why there are some people who would isolate themselves to news or any other information for them to have peace of mind. So, may kapilala ko, librarian, because of this pandemic, she really isolate herself, walang TV, walang social media, kasi nagkaroon na siya ng health, health anxiety, may depression na siya, lagi nagpapalpitate na siya. So, para maiwasan, babawasan yung kanyang health, health anxiety, nag-isolate na siya sa information. Yan, yan ang ginawa niya. So, Next is, individuals with high health anxiety are significantly more likely to seek information that is according to SING 2016. That is according to SING 2016. So here, the more health anxious we are, the more we want to know information. Ganda, di ba? The more health anxious we are, the more we want to know information. But I think this does not apply to all. May mga tao na ayaw magpatipi, takot malalaman na siya ay high blood. Ayaw magpa-FDS kasi baka malaman niya mataas ang kanyang sugar. Something like that. So, and we should not encourage this kind of attitude. 
individuals suffering from health anxiety are more likely to seek health information compared to others and they make self-confidence using medical resources. Tanis et al. 2016 found that health anxiety has a positive relationship with online health information seeking and the individuals with health anxiety are more likely to seek health information and are also less satisfied with receiving specialized care and consulting with a doctor. They said that is according to Tanis et al. Next, the higher the people's health anxiety level, the more diverse sources they use, according to Muse 2012. These are the kind of people that really want to find the ins and outs, or we could say everything about their perceived illnesses. So they gather all the informations related to their illnesses. As for my takeaway, librarians should work closely with healthcare providers in ensuring proper health monitoring and evaluation. Librarians should be more health information conscious as information provider. Health-related issues should be given priority at work. And in the current pandemic, librarians should aim to do three things. First, support public health awareness. Second, support research teams, researchers, and faculty. And lastly, provide routine core services for regular library users. I would like to end my presentation with this word from Maslow. We can seek knowledge in order to, re to reduce anxiety, and we can avoid knowing in order to reduce anxiety. So, if you want to reduce your anxiety, it's either you seek knowledge or simply avoid knowing it. With this, thank you so much and stay safe everyone. Here is my email address. If you want to ask questions, you can uh, send this via my email. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lindy. At uh, the same time, I would like to say thank you to Dr. Malata, uh, Mr. Wilson Shua for the presentations. So far, we had in our group chat, in our chat uh, area here in our web webinar jam, we had noted some questions for our, our speakers. So I'd like to request our speakers to please go back to your screen right now. As we're going to entertain some questions from our participants. So, Do Dr. Malata. Yes, Dr. Malata, uh, salamat po for the presentation. It was very timely. A lot has been uh, uh, parang nabuhay ng loob because of the encouragement that they had because of your presentation. Um, I just would like to uh, throw some questions here. Um, Dr. Malata, how can librarians handle the anxiety or stress that is related to possibility for retrenchment for their position as librarian? Yes, uh, the worries of unemployment really alarming, especially now with 45% of our workforce are currently unemployed. Uh, I don't know. We have to hope hope for the best. But I think the uh, those who are employed with the government uh, will continue to have a steady job, and the uh, private sectors uh, would be affected for for a while, probably for this year. But I, I don't think that uh, uh, this will last uh, very long, and we might be back to normal. But hopefully next year. Thank you, Podok. Um, Sir Wilson Shua, there is a question here from one of our participants. If um, 
there, he, he is an aspiring data librarian. What are the resources, uh, coursewares, or materials that, can, that you can recommend to equip ourselves with the necessary competencies such as programming as a data scientist? Yeah, so I can recommend uh, the role in uh, presenting courses on Python or R. These are the two uh, software tools that we use in data analytics. Okay, so let me just repeat that. The, uh, Mr. Wilson Sua sent me earlier, you can have uh, Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y, how you pronounce it, am I right? And Coursera are the good sources of training. And you can open, you, you can also browse opendata.gov or Kaggle. These are good sources of data according to Mr. Wilson Shua. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, Dr. Melata, sir, is it okay to put to jog while or bike while wearing a face mask? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's now government requirement. No? If you are caught without a face mask, you will be fined at least 500 pesos. So I think we need to comply with government requirements. But oh. health implications, sir, so far, wala naman, di ba? As long as you can, you know, na pag hindi ka na makahinga, just, just take off your mask for a while. Yes, uh, if there is <laughs> no close contact with people then you can normally take off your mask you, the mask is supposed to protect you in crowded place but if you go biking and you are alone in the countryside or uh, in the middle of the road then from time to time you may uh, lower your mask or remove your face Okay, thank you very much, Pudok. Um, Dr. Lindy, uh, there is a question here. Uh, as a librarian, we must act to reconcile the gap between information and knowledge available. So what can you uh, further um, advise for librarians to at least shorten the gap between information and knowledge available in our libraries? Okay, as a librarian, in order for us to, to shorten or to... Um, uh fill in the gap between the the information and the knowledge available in our library so especially at this point in time everybody's seeking on uh, the uh digit information so as as part of my takeaway sabi ko nga, we should help we should be closely working with the health uh, professionals by simply providing them the, the proper, the accurate, the updated information. And of course, we should always, uh, we shouldn't close our door as a librarian um, to offer all the informations needed by, by everybody. Although in times of pandemic, some would say that we librarians are non-essentials, but at this point in time also, we should show to them that now is the time that we librarians should be working in, in helping health professionals, giving them um, supplementing uh, updated, uh, accurate information in uh, that could help in, uh, let's say, preventing and uh, uh, preventing and um, uh, spreading the, uh, the the awareness of this uh, COVID-19. So we should take vital role as a librarian in doing that. Thank you, Paul, Dr. Lindy. Uh, Dr. Manata, I have a question dito from one of our parent librarian. Uh, for work from home parents, po, how can we at least um limit the stress or anxiety in terms of also helping our children or studying at home <clears throat> so as i have talked about uh one major cause of stressor is too much exposure to to the news or social media so as i have explained one thing about the news is most news that are broadcast 
have negative impacts or negative information or negative implications. So that's why it tends to affect our mood and uh, affect our, our behavior. So I did an experiment here at home. Uh, while I was drinking my coffee, my maid was listening to the radio and I get upset by what I hear in the news. So I told our maid to set up, uh, set up the radio. Oh, and uh, when the radio was turned off, I, I feel relaxed and not affected at all. So uh, that's one practical thing that, that we can do. And when you go to to, to speak, so you can not, you can no longer tell which right which so in order to get uh, reliable data, you should go to reliable source. So. I first would like to start learn about COVID. I go to the Johns Hopkins University website, which I'm sure uh, out uh, factual that I uh, get my information there, but they have reliable. So it could limit this to tell me the exposure uh, news. We could have more. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Malata. Uh, I think I missed some of your voice uh, earlier, but you mentioned they can check on John Hopkins' uh, website. Am I right? So they can uh, uh, they can learn more or read more information about uh, uh, how to deal with this mental stress. Um, sir, how can we know if uh, our children do have um, information anxiety during this time? And what can uh, be your um, simple, what do you call this? How, what are your advices for us to deal with this uh, anxiety of the kids at home? So, as I've said, we should spend more time with, with the family. Uh, talk to our children, spend more time with them, eat together. Even watching K-drama together, just... just uh, the togetherness, the camaraderie in, in, in the home will will have a more positive in, impact than letting our children stay in the room all by themselves and consuming a lot of social media. So family family time would be important. And also like taking up habits together. Like, uh, example in our house now we are doing a lot of gardening together with our daughter so the whole family is gardening becomes a family activity and it, it's fun fun doing things together thank you sir um doc lindy i think i'm going to shoot this question to you since you're also a director of libraries and you have uh, i think library staff uh, under your uh, umbrella how can you ensure uh, as a librarian or as a head of the library the health of your library staff and uh, of course some of our library clients while you're giving library services during this time okay in our institutions we follow specific protocols okay um, we had uh, skeletal uh, functions for our staff. Not everybody is required to go at work. And uh, before they, uh, uh, we could enter the building, we followed certain protocols like thermal scanning, so to ensure that the health issues of the employees were safely guarded. And since, since the lockdown, we are still opening the services of the library via uh, of course, we used also the social media, and uh, we always have the contact to our uh, faculty and students for whatever needed resources that we have. So that's the only way that we can reach our users in this time of pandemic, but uh, we should also so ensure the safety and uh, safety and protections of our employees by simply following the uh, the nationwide protocols like wearing of thermal uh, like wearing of face shield and mask uh, the monitoring our uh, temperature so we do that every day morning and afternoon and uh, that's it and there is a uh, 
everything monitoring and clinics for the employees that uh in their uh, in their posts so i think uh that's that's simple contribution to on how are we going to lessen the the spread of this virus and also without deteriorating the the services that we should do as a librarian okay thank you very much doc lindy i guess uh, we will wrap up some of the questions here uh, some were already answered by our presenters. Um, again, in behalf of uh, Fly Western Visayas Region Librarians Council in Regalo, I'd like to say thank you to Dr. Luel Malata, to um, uh, Mr. Wilson Shua, and uh, Dr. Maria Lindy Masalindo for joining us today and for raising our invitation to share your expertise with our librarians, not only from the Philippines, but librarians from other Asian countries as well. Thank you very much, sir and ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. God bless, Paul. Okay, so at this time, we're going to have the uh, uh, regional presentation of the Fly Western Visayas Regional Council reports. Um, prior to that, uh, for those of you who are not from Western Visayas, that would be okay. We, we would love to. Uh, uh, we would love to here and join us but for those of you who are not from western visayas um we we do thank you and we thank you for your presence for joining with us maraming salamat po because because we have 1000 more than 1800 participants who joined us via youtube and via webinar jam so maraming salamat for joining the fly western visayas online regional conference for western visayas participants we're going to move on with our regional report we're going to start with by the presentation my presentation actually of what we had done so far in our region for the past uh, for the last year of 2019. please allow me to uh, share with you our um call this our video presentation of what we had done so far for all the activities we had conducted which were not only participated by librarians from the region but librarians from um, uh, other regional councils as well and our um, of course we have our collaboration with government and non-governmental institution
Okay, no, we'll just wait for Miss Anna to ano pa, to refresh her browser para makabalik po siya. So, I already posted the evaluation link. So, please answer the evaluation link. And after that, we will uh, release the e-certificate within seven days. For our next webinar po just uh, visit our facebook page we have listed a lot of webinars uh, this uh, next week and the following weeks so if you're interested just register then for the presentations po uh, uh, we will include that dun sa uh, certificates. Mm -hmm. Just click the ano po ano, meron po dito uh, link kasi baka mayroon po kayong maling tinipe. Yung iba po kapag nagkakamali sila ng lagay ng link nila without s. So paki-check po yung yes, tama yes. po yung spelling. I'm back. Medyo may problema tayo sa connection. Anyway, Yaki, uh, we are reminding our participants to please open our evaluation form and submit. We're going to issue a certificate of participation for our online participants. And of course, we're going to... Um, materials as well, our presentations. Okay, thank you, Sir Carlos. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do? So I'm going to share screen again. Baka hindi po niya kaya, no? Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. So we're going to proceed with Ma'am Ninfa. Uh, wala pa po si Ma'am Ninfa. Oh, okay, wala pa sa Manifa. Sige, sige po. Anyway, all your questions were given to our to our presenters. For those who are asking more about Chat Bertha, um, they're going to post this through their um, frequently asked questions. Napuputol kayo, ma'am. Anyway, sige po. Okay, Ma'am Ninfa, are you in na po? Yes, sir. Okay, so we'll just wait for Ma'am Ann. I think may na po yung connection niya. Uh Oo, -oh. sige sir, okay. Thank According you. to Ma'am Ann po, uh, I think we will proceed po sa treasurer's report. Okay, sige, sige. Are you going to uh, share your screen, Ma'am? 
Ah, uh, sir, up it, sir. Start na ta, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, good morning, fellow librarians. This is the financial report of, of our association. Ma'am, magsishare po kayo ng ano? Magsishare po kayo ng screen? Sorry po. Up. Uh, Meron yeah, po ba kayong purpose po. Yung PowerPoint po. Uh, saan po yun, ma'am? Teka. Hindi, hindi, ano yun. Share screen. Ah, ito, ito. Yeah. That one, yeah. Then, ano doon? Na. Okay. Okay na po, sir. Uh, hindi pa po. Hindi mo makita. Mm -hmm. Teka. Sandali. Uh, your entire screen application. Okay. Okay na sir. Yes ma'am. Pa F5 na lang po. Para full ano po siya. Okay, we're back. Am I back? Nandan na si Ma'am Ann. Yes, dito na po ako. Mauna ka na lang, Ma'am Ann? No, Ma'am, you go ahead po. Kasi may video presentation, medyo mabigat po siya. So, kailangan ko pong isend kay Sir Carlos. Thank you po. Okay, okay. So, good morning, fellow librarians. I'm glad that we are here today and happy to see you. We're all safe and in good health. So we have now your financial report covering the period from January to 2019 to July 2020. Okay, so we have these collections for annual due. We have a total of 160 members who paid their annual due covering the period from 2017, 2018, and 2019, and some paid already for 2020. So this is the amount. For the membership, we have 10 new members times 500, we have 5,000. Then the, during the July 25, 26, 2019, we conducted the seminar workshop held at CPU, wherein we have sponsors, and we collected 45,900 for the sponsorship. Then we have uh, registration fees and the total amount is 168,500 collected. We also have refund from the 2018 National Book Week celebration expenses in the amount of 22,500. This is a refund from the Ply National and in 2019, 22,500 for a total of 313,938.13 total amount collected. For the sharing, uh, for the annual due, 50% of the annual due goes to Ply National, which is 24,000. And the membership, 5,000 goes to the Ply National. Okay, so the total amount that we have at this co uh, collected is 284,938.13. For the ply, a total amount for their share is 29,000. We sent 20,300 last September, and we still have to send an additional amount of 8,700 the remaining amount that will be sent to them. Now we go to the expenses. We have different activities. So we have preparations before, during, and after the July 25 to 26 ply seminar workshop. So we have from June to July, we have a lot of miscellaneous expenses, which covers our supplies, snacks, and there, of course, some dinner with working committees, meetings, and other activities amounting to 13,271. 
Then, of course, we have the hotel for our speaker, incidental expenses, token for speakers, transportation expenses, that's for taxi and gasoline, which totaled 30,015 and 50 centavos. During the fellowship night on July 25, and it's already July, yes, 25, we we have raffled prices amounting to 5,100. We also gave a token to our singer and of course to the operator of the lights at the Casa Real. Then we give an amount of 2,500 for aftercare of the place, which was given to Mom Rosie Helly, the librarian. And for the catering services for the seminar, and the fellowship night, we have 154,650. Total for the fellowship and other expenses is 164,450. Then we have bank charges for the checks that we encashed. So BDO charges 200 for each check. We have two checks encashed and 100 for RCBC for a total of 500. Okay, for August and September, we have the Historia Sa Plaza, uh, wherein we contributed an amount for the snacks and storybooks for children in the amount of 2000 then we celebrated the national book week on september 6 uh, this was held at the iloilo city iloilo city hall and we have the expenses of 24172.65 so this was uh, uh spearheaded or we, we were assisted by Ms. Marion Aguirre, the librarian of Ilulu City Public Library. Then we have refunds for expenses of Mam Gregorius. Then we gave subsidy to Sir Christian Acevedo to attend the Ply and Bot meeting in lieu of the w, Ply WVRLC president in the amount of 3000 then another 3,000 for Sir Edmar Labrador for the Ply National Seminar in lieu of Ma'am Anna, Anna May Cantel. Then of course, we conducted a meeting in September. We have snacks of 318 pesos and we remitted an amount of 20,300 to Ply National. So a total of 53,420 Point sixty five centavos. Then in October 2019, uh, we, we deposited a check a amount of 2,500 to apply national convention that is for the sponsorship, the souvenir program. November to December, we contributed 1,000 to the outtaking of new librarians. Then in January and February, uh, we have a meeting, January 11 and February 11. We gave transportation subsidy to Ma'am Villaruel and Sir Juan Magdael. So Ma'am Villaruel attended the January and February 11 meeting. She was given 1,000 and Sir Juan a February 11 meeting, 500 for a total of 1,500. For the January 11 meeting, we had this 195 spent for snacks. On February 11, we had a meeting from 10 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon, which included snacks and lunch in the amount of 901 pesos. Also gave subsidy to Sir Stephen Alayon 
represent by WVRLC for PRC Outstanding Librarian Screening in Manila in the amount of 3,000. And another subsidy from Mam Ma Anna Cantel to attend the NBOT meeting February 14, 2020 in the amount of 1,500. Then we still have to remit the amount of 7,500 to Ply National. This is the annual two, 50% and the membership. Excluding the 2020 payments because the 2020 payments is already intended for 2021. So if there is a total for January and February, total of 14,596 expenses. Then, excuse. I think I missed one slide. <laughs> Where is that? Uh, for, for March to June, we have an expenses of uh, 9,000. No, I think one slide was missing. Uh, we, we gave 5,000 uh, 5, to the city of Iloilo for the, uh, Anoni, uh, during for the COVID-19 uh, donation to the city, then 2,000 for Mam Tess Ledesma as death aid, and another 2,000 for Miss Rachel Alegre of Bly National Office for death aid. So we have a total of 9,000. So in summary, okay. So this is the summary of expenses. We have a total of 273,482.15. Our total collections is 284,938.13. Less our expenses, we have 11,455.98 cash on hand. Okay, so this is all. Okay, thank, thank you, you. Mom. Okay, for the participants, po, no, just answer the uh, the evaluation form. Then seven to uh, at least one week, po, we will send the certificate of participation. Okay. Yes. Okay, Miss Ann. Yeah, maraming salamat po, Ma'am Ninfa. Anyway, the video presentation of our regional council active programs and activities will be post posted via our uh, Facebook page of Bly WVRLC to keep you updated um, with our 2019-2020 uh, activities. For those who are asking if they can have copies of our presentations, yes, we will send po because it provided email address through your evaluation form. That's the reason why we are encouraging you to fill up your evaluation form so we can send to you your uh, copy of uh, the presentations of our speakers. Okay, again, uh, I think this is the end of our uh, online regional conference. In behalf of Ply Western Visayas Region Librarians Council officers, Together with our advisors, Sir, Sir Stephen Alayon, uh, Sir Federico Billiones, and Dr. Riza Alenzuela, and Rigalo, Touching Lives. We have Mr. Carlos Eclivia. Maraming salamat po, po for joining us, and we're really uh, blessed to have all our speakers and our presenters for today. So maraming salamat, and God bless us all.